Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Ashley Jackson, Director of Membership Marketing here at FRLA. I want to thank you guys for joining us today. You know, before we get started with TripAdvisor, I want to just let you know that this webinar is being recorded today and we will be um, emailing that out after the webinar. Also, if you have any questions during this presentation, please feel free to type those into the chat box. We'll address those at the end of the webinar located on the right hand side of your screen. We also have a disclaimer. Everyone loves a fun disclaimer that we have to read. So. The information provided here is for educational purposes and FRLA does not warrant or endorse any particular provider. FRLA is prohibited from providing specific legal, financial, or accounting advice, and the information represented here is not intended as such. FRLA encourages businesses to consult qualified, competent advisors in these fields to explore their specific situation. This webinar is being recorded for future use by the association and other industry members. Your participation in the call is deemed to be your consent to the recording. So now that we got that fun disclaimer out of the way, I want to introduce our moderator for today, Diane Halleck. She's the head of a TripAdvisor's business to business content marketing team. You want to take it away? Thanks so much, Ashley, and thank you so much, everybody, for joining us today. And we also wanted to thank um, the FRL. FRLA for inviting us as well. Um, and huge thanks to everyone on the line. We know you're very busy and appreciate you taking the time out of your busy days to join us. Um, I'm Diane Halleck, head of TripAdvisor's B2B content marketing team at TripAdvisor, and I'll be moderating today's session. Uh, I'm joined today by Becky Foley, who is the Senior Director of Trust and Safety at TripAdvisor. And we originally planned to have Charlie Ballard here as well, but he's unexpectedly out of the office today. So we're very happy to have have Val Anthony, uh, Senior Manager of Strategic Insights, joining us for the call too. Um, and so in terms of the agenda, first Val is going to run through some of the latest market updates that she's pulled related to the Florida market specifically. Then Becky will share the latest in the TripAdvisor Travel Safe initiative for both hotels and restaurants and share a little bit more about how that's helping to drive travelers' uh, confidence to hit the road again. And then we'll take some Q&A at the end of the session. And as Ashley mentioned, um, you can use the questions box on the right side of your screen at any time throughout the presentation to submit those questions. And we'll answer uh, some of those at the end of the session today. And of course, if you want more information or resources from TripAdvisor, you can get them at tripadvisor.com slash insights. And so now I'm happy to turn it over to Val Anthony to get things started. Val? Great, thanks Diane. Thanks for joining everyone. My name is Val Anthony. I work on the Strategic Insights team here at TripAdvisor. A huge part of our job here has been looking at how the travel industry is being impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. The most common questions we get from our partners are, where is travel down? Where is it up? What kind of signs should we be looking for? And most importantly, what can we do about it? So I'm here to talk about what we're seeing today. Let's get started. First, I want to talk about how we're organizing our research and our insights around these five phases. We first talk about the decline phase, which is mostly behind us. It mostly happened in March, and we don't have to think about it as much anymore. So now we start thinking about, thinking about when travel is going to come back up again. And those two next phases are called plateau, emerge. Then we'll talk about domestic. Plateau is when there is just no travel happening at all. We're at the bottom, and we saw much of that already happen in April until shortly thereafter, where, we're, where we started seeing users turn into dreamers again, and users started to research travel farther out, prepping for when travel does return. So that leads us into the emerge phase, which is users that are starting to come out of their homes, visit their favorite local taco stand, maybe seeing their friends and family, feeling more comfortable about coming outside. And right then and there is around the same time when we start, user, start seeing users looking at domestic travel. So asking questions like, where can I get in a car and drive to? How can I celebrate some of these lifts of certain restrictions? And then finally, that's followed by the international final phase, which is essentially the new normal. How do we travel internationally? Today, specifically, we'll talk about the eMERGE and then domestic phase. Okay. First, we all know we're not alone in this. 
all of us are in this together across the globe. Every sector of the travel industry has been hit, even through this difficult time. Though so we're starting to see some optimism from consumers and these dreamer, dreamers across the globe. For example, when we sent out a survey um, to TripAdvisor users, we found out that more than a third of consumers said they are rescheduling a trip due to COVID-19 rather than canceling it. So we're not giving up completely. They're just, people are pushing out their trips a little bit further. Nearly 30% of consumers said they were planning to reschedule a canceled trip to a later date. So that's the other 30% left on table. And 40% of consumers said that they rescheduled a trip reported making changes as a result of travel restrictions. So essentially they are looking to travel, it's just travel restrictions are unfortunately having an impact on that. Meaning the second those travel restrictions come up, the second we, start, we, will, we should start seeing travel happen again. Now, what we saw was even when people were still in lockdown, people are still having that sort of optimism and dreaming of the day they can travel again. So we're seeing that consumer resilience. Nearly 70% of consumers said they were still thinking about travel and that where they wanted to go next. So we might be stuck at home, but especially me personally, I can't wait till I travel again. It's, we haven't given up on travel, we are resilient and people will travel again with our help. Uh, over a third of consumers said they were more likely to be watching videos about destinations they want to visit and nearly 20% of consumers were more likely to be watching travel shows and or documentaries. So not only are people not losing hope about travel, but they're keeping that hope alive in their homes by watching documentaries, by watching um, different videos, advertisements online about these types of destinations. Now with that, the important thing to keep in mind, especially for those of us in the US, <laughs> Uh, where we're hit the hardest is something we call the hammer and the dance. You guys can look this up. We'll send a link um, to this, or you can Google it yourself. It's a really interesting way to explain what's happening and what we should expect. The idea of the hammer and dance is looking at the pandemic in two phases. So one is a huge impact we have. Um, uh, the huge impact we can have on is during this hammer phase, which is equivalent to us actually staying inside of quarantining. This protects others, our family, our friends from getting sick, ourselves from getting sick, and it protects and gives healthcare workers and the healthcare system time to prep and scientists time to figure out what is this disease, try to research more, uh, try to research this virus more. This effectively results in a notable drop of cases, right? Because we're not going outside, we're not spreading it to others, we're staying indoors. We've left that phase and have moved into something called the dance, which is gonna be a much longer uh, phase and will probably last until there's an actual vaccine, which may or may not be until next year. In this dance phase, we need to remember that the virus is still out there. And in order to prevent it from coming back full force, we need to all stay vigilant by wearing masks, masks, socially distancing, and implementing new safety and hygiene measures in our businesses. This goes hand in hand with traveler priorities right now. When we ask users about important factors that are taken into account when thinking about travel again, nearly 90% 90 responded with cleanliness. So that's something Becky is gonna take us through later on is safety and hygiene and how we can make that at the forefront of when our businesses begin to reopen. Of course, things like insurance on the booking, discounts and proximity to where consumers live remain a priority for consumers um, across the world. So first, Let's dig into that eMERGE phase where users are becoming more comfortable stepping outside, visiting their favorite restaurants, starting to see friends locally. What we see is overall restaurant traffic tells a, similar, tells a very similar story in America as the entire market level trend. Weekly changes have been minimal lately, whereas European markets like France, Italy, and Germany increase in restaurant interactions on TripAdvisor. We'll dig into the US restaurants traffic in a second. 
Now let's look at that restaurant traffic based on the location of the restaurant. Just now we looked at the actual user IP. So humans sitting in the US, humans sitting in France, humans sitting in Italy. Now we're looking at traffic based on where the restaurant, the restaurants are actually located. Looking at the average year on year decline across all states in the US, we're seeing restaurant traffic is improving faster than others in the Carolinas, while Florida restaurant traffic is right in line actually with the US average. You can see Florida's yellow line has been actually rising well above the country average up until about a couple of weeks ago when the number of new cases began to grow. So this shouldn't be too much of a surprise, but I'm staying optimistic that once we're able to eliminate these cases and get those numbers lower, Florida will come back to be higher than the market average decline once again. Now, we've talked about this emerge phase just now where people are coming outside, maybe seeing their friends, going to restaurants. Now let's look at this domestic phase of actually like traveling. Looking around the globe, we're seeing some countries continue to increase. In fact, some markets like Switzerland have actually exceeded 2019 levels of users that are clicking to book travel domestically. We're only talking about domestic. Remember, it goes emerge, domestic, international. When it comes to domestic travel plans across the United States, though, there's a slightly different story, particularly more recently. You can see the US was gradually but consistently increasing until about mid-June which is where we started seeing that year on year change plateau again. This, as you know, coincides directly with the resurgence of new cases across the country. So although travelers are not as optimistic right now, the ones that were planning trips continue to do so. Meaning we're not seeing that that green line you're seeing, it's not changing much, it's not declining, which means that the users that have been planning their trips say, on the last week of June are still doing so. They're not falling off. So I'm optimistic again to see that start to gradually and consistently come back up once we're able to eliminate those uh, new cases or lower those new cases altogether. So far, we've been focusing on users in each market. So let's dig even deeper into this into um, American traffic by user state. So again, this is where the user is based. We're seeing users in Washington and New York continue to increase hotel research and clicks for the fourth week in a row. They're starting to see the benefits of those strict restrictions they had in place start to pay off. Although on the other hand, unfortunately, users in Florida have gradually become a little less optimistic about domestic travel, specifically as new cases rise throughout the state. And as a reminder, I mean, you can uh, reference this later, but what you're looking at here is week on week difference of users that are clicking to book hotels. Now that we can see who's planning travel, let's look at where users are actually looking to go in the US. We know the rising numbers have impacted travel optimism in the last couple of weeks. So what we can see is North Carolina destinations aren't as down year on year as some of the other destination states. The overall declining trend does impact North Carolina destinations, but not but at a much slower pace than other state destinations. Whereas states like Texas and California have declined more rapidly in the last two weeks while Florida destinations took a dip, but not as significant as some of the other states. You can see here, te Texas took a big dip, whereas Florida's dip did happen, but it's not nearly as strong as some of the other states. Of the users that are still planning travel to the United States, Chicago destinations stood out this week with a slight increase capturing traveler interest domestically and internationally, actually. While many popular destinations across Florida, South Carolina, and Arizona dipped again this week. 
of the users that are planning trips to Florida this week, because there are many left, a lot of the interest has started to come from states like Connecticut and Arizona, especially in the last week when interest peaked. So just to break this down a little bit, this is looking at users from which states are clicking to book their next holiday in the state of Florida specifically. So we see just in the last week, Connecticut, Arizona, South Carolina, Texas, New York, and Alabama, and even a little bit New Jersey are coming up. The interest of users in those states has peaked for Florida destinations and Florida interest overall. So far, we've learned about who's traveling, where they're traveling to, now let's take a look at specific user behavior of travelers that are still continuing to plan their next trip. What else do we know about them? What I find super interesting and more importantly actionable for businesses across Florida and around the states is when users are planning to take their next trip. Looking at our first party click to book behavior, we see the vast majority of American domestic travel is planned for the next week. It's all very near term. Remember in the beginning, we briefly spoke about all those different phases of travel and how the eMERGE phase rolls into the domestic phase, which includes travelers eager to get outside and travel domestically, even if it's on a road trip. Well, this is the graph that's a good representation of that eMERGE to domestic phase transition. People aren't waiting to book their next trip. They're using TripAdvisor more for last minute getaways. This is a good sign. And when users are clicking to book their last minute getaways, they're doing so mostly for shorter durations. In fact, you can see here the green line, the trips that are seven plus days in length to make up the least percentage of share of all trips that are being booked in the US domestically. So while traffic may have declined slightly last week because of the sudden resurgence of new cases, the one and two night states are the least down of them all. We've discussed who's traveling, where they're traveling to, when they're looking to go, how long they're looking to stay. Now, for the last piece, let's touch on what kind of travel users are looking for the most. More than ever, travelers are most keen to surround themselves with nature and the outdoors. Properties near the beach are 82% less down than any other lodging types in Americas, which is really good news for Florida destinations where there are plenty of beautiful beaches. With that, Boating has become a popular amenity, which is a great opportunity for Florida hoteliers to advertise similar amenities and close by facilities where travelers can take advantage of these outdoor activities that they are searching for and clicking on um, more often. That brings us to the end of my section. So in summary, travel continues to be top of mind for users, especially in the Americas. I wanna make sure we all work together to make sure that people are traveling safe so that growth through phase four and five can continue with our help. Now, introducing Becky. Take it away, Becky. Thanks so much. Um, hi, everybody. I am Becky Foley. I head TripAdvisor's Trust and Safety Team. And I'm super excited to talk with you today, um, a group of Floridians, because I'm actually, while well, I live in Denver now, I'm born and raised in West Palm Beach and went to Florida State. So uh, proud Floridian here. Uh, happy to talk to you today. One quick reminder before um, we get into some background on our new initiative, Travel Safe. If you have any questions, um, please go to the right-hand panel and ask any questions that you might have. We'd be happy to answer them at the end of these presentations. Um, so to get into Travel Safe, TripAdvisor's Travel Safe initiative, uh, Val, I think you want to go ahead a couple slides. 
Um, great, thanks so much. So TripAdvisor has been asking the same questions that I am sure is top of mind for many of you. What is going to help travelers feel safe um, as they start to travel again? So we've been doing a ton of research as Val shared a lot of the data with you, and I won't go into sharing too much more data, but just starting with a little bit more, um, which is that 64% of travelers say that they're not gonna travel until they see physical changes that make them feel safer. 74% um, of travelers uh, said that a checklist of safety measures on TripAdvisor listings are going to be very or extremely helpful. So uh, next, like, what specifically do they want to see? What actions do TripAdvi TripAdvisor's users want to see? Um, they want to know that 82% uh, of them want to know that there's an increased frequency of disinfecting high contact equipment. 76% of travelers want to know that there are policies encouraging employees to stay home when sick. And then 74% of travelers want to see, they want to see your staff wearing PPE. So they want to see them wearing gloves, masks, et cetera. There's definitely um, a shift, you know, and one of the major brands was talking about this when I did a call with them a few weeks ago, which is that previously maybe they were trying to take cleanliness measures behind the scenes. Uh, I think they mentioned something like, you know, we were going with the Disney methodology like make the magic happen where people don't see it. That is definitely um, different than what travelers want to see now. They want to overtly see uh, cleanliness measures being taken. So after reading all of the survey results and uh, getting a real sense of what travelers want, we decided to embark upon our Travel Safe initiative. And the goals of this project were really twofold. First, we want to make sure that we are putting travelers' minds at ease in terms of safety. So they told us they want easily digestible information and guidance, um, and that's what we aim to deliver. And then for you, our partners, um, we know that you guys are taking a ton of different measures. You're putting a lot of effort into making sure that people who come to your property feel safe. And you want, you told us you need a way to let travelers know what those measures are and what you've done at your property. Um, so this initiative is in response to that. Uh, the first iteration of our Travel Safe initiative launched on June 15th um, with several improvements that we've already implemented. So it first launched for hotels, recently launched for restaurants. The checklist is available for both hotels and restaurants in the TripAdvisor Management Center. You can see the link right here. It's available on tripadvisor.com backslash owners. Um, and one question that you might be asking yourself is why TripAdvisor? You know, why is TripAdvisor the best place to share this? TripAdvisor, we actually use data not provided by us, but this is provided by a survey done by YouGov. Um, TripAdvisor is perceived more positively by the general population than any other major media brand. So we're definitely a brand that people are coming to to get uh, travel guidance. What we've done in order to create this uh, checklist, this list of uh, safety measures, is we consulted experts around the world, um, associations, different government agencies, healthcare specialists, and that coupled with the extensive research that I mentioned before um, is what travelers have indicated is important to them. So the end result is this checklist of measures that businesses can be taking um, on their business listing. If you go into your management center and you update the checklist of measures that you're taking, visibility of these efforts on TripAdvisor is going to be highlighted. And so what that means is that once you've activated the safety information in your listing, there's gonna be a green banner right at the top of your business listing. And it's gonna say keeping you, it's gonna um, have a link in it where a uh, user can click on that link and it's gonna bring them down to a keeping you safe during COVID-19 section. 
that section is going to include that checklist um, and then also will include a custom safety response that you can share. Um, so this is a custom message where let's say everything that you're doing isn't necessarily encompassed in this checklist. You can sort of uh, expand upon all of the specific measures and things you're doing to keep travelers safe in this custom section. Um, other options that are going to be included in this new section are uh, the existing Q&A product that we have where travelers can ask questions and those questions can be specific to your property and those questions can be answered by either yourself and or other travelers. Um, so we'll include a quick link to that to submit a QA. and a uh, We will also uh, prompt travelers to write reviews for your property within that. There's also a um, field to add an email address. So if there's a specific email address that travelers should be contacting you to ask you more questions, if they've got more questions, um, and a phone number. So all of that will be in the keeping you safe during COVID-19 section. Um, and we've already started to see travelers use the Q&A section for COVID-19 related questions. They'll, they're asking questions like, um, is your pool open right now? Are your restaurants open? What does room service look like today? Um, so it's really great that travelers are already reaching out and trying to understand what the experience will be like um, if they come visit your property. Um, oh, if you just go back really quick, yeah. So, um, great, this is what you can see right here is the uh, checklist of measures that we've launched for hotels. One of the things that's really important to note is that we will be constantly changing this list. Um, we've already got a couple of changes that we are going to make based on feedback from um, hoteliers and associations to the list that will launch towards the end of August. Um, but as you guys know, you know, the measures that are important to consumers, the measures that are recommended by governments, it's constantly changing. Two months ago, uh, we weren't supposed to be wearing masks. And now the research from various government agencies tell us that it can prevent the virus um, in case of close contact. So, you know, we want to make sure that we keep on top of the government recommendations, feedback from associations and owners, and also really the traveler feedback that we will continue to gather through frequent surveys. Um, next is the list for our restaurants. Um, again, this launched uh, about two weeks ago um, and will also be updating frequently. So uh, two things that I want to note about participation in this uh, product. One is that in order to um, well, actually, I need to go back a couple of slides. Sorry, I'm not directing my own slides, but I did want to mention a third feature of this new product. If you just go back two more, um, thanks. Is that, yeah, right here, is that when you participate in our Travel Safe initiative, you are going to be included in um, a filter. So when somebody goes to a specific destination, say they're searching for a hotel in West Palm Beach, um, there is a a filter on the left hand side of the page that travelers can select where they will only be shown uh, properties that have indicated they are taking safety measures related to COVID-19. Um, one thing that's really important to note is that your participation in the safety measures checklist is not going to have any impact whatsoever on your ranking on TripAdvisor. Um, so your ranking will stay the same whether you participate or not. Another important thing to note is that to be included in this filter, we're not um, indicating that you have to say that you're taking every single measure on the list of measures that we've shared. So as long as you are taking some measures and you are indicating what those measures are to travelers, you will be included in this filter um, there on the left-hand side. So um, finally, just the last thing that we are collecting um, is that we, travelers have indicated the most important thing to them is 
uh, feedback from other travelers. So within our review form, um, they will be asked um, things like, did the hotel provide san hand sanitizer? Did you see employees wearing masks? So we are gonna be asking travelers more targeted questions within our review form about the types of safety measures that they experienced on your property. Um, okay, so I think we can, uh, yeah, thanks so much. So now we'll go to how you can actually participate in this um, program. So again, I mentioned the URL before. This recording will be sent out and it'll include the slides in it. So you will have the link available to you. Um, you go to tripadvisor.com backslash owners. You are going to um, either log in or register. So if you haven't already claimed your listing, you will go to claim your listing on TripAdvisor. This is the same place where you can respond to reviews, add your management responses, and make any adjustments to your amenities as they appear on TripAdvisor. Once you're logged into the management center, right at, to at the top, you're gonna see something that says share safety details. This is gonna bring you to our COVID-19 uh, response center. Once you click on that button, um, and you go into the COVID-19 response center, you will be presented with the um, list of precautions and, or measures that you are taking at your property. You just check the precautions that you are taking. And then you, you see there below, there's the ability for you to add your custom response of additional measures or whatever you want message you wanna get out there to people who are considering coming to your business related to COVID-19. Um, and you'll also see there's the contact email and contact phone number. So that if there's a more specific uh, contact person or um, place that you'd like to send these questions, you can include that information here. Um, okay, so I feel like I've covered pretty in depth how you can add the safety measures that apply to your business and what to do for the free form text box. Um, the final thing that I just want to note is it was overwhelming in some of the survey feedback that we received that travelers are really interested in ensuring that the information they're getting is up to date. So within that uh, COVID-19 module on the listing page, there is a timestamp that says when it was recently updated. What I would encourage you to do is make sure that you're staying on top of that checklist, make sure you're staying on top of that custom response and updating it you know, as frequently as you make changes within your business because that um, date will change based on the last time you went in and made an update. Um, and that is something travelers want to see because things are changing so quickly with this situation. Um, they want to make sure they're getting the most up-to-date information from you. Um, so in closing, I think I probably plugged it pretty well here, but I would just encourage you definitely, if you haven't already, take the time today to go in and update um, the information around what kind of measures you're taking. The checklist is the way that travelers want to do the comparison. So really important to update those safety measures. We've got over 50,000 properties um, it already participating in this recently launched program. And there's definitely a great opportunity to highlight your property better on TripAdvisor and help travelers make easier decisions when thinking about um, where they feel safest um, in their next trip. Thank you so much. Great, thank you so much, Becky, and thanks so much, Val, as well. Um, and with that, we're going to be able to take a few questions here just at the end of the session. Um, just a reminder, if you can, uh, you can use the questions box at the right side of your screen to submit any of those. I have a couple questions already for Val and Becky, um, but if you wanna drop any other ones uh, and just send them to the, to the panelists, that would be great. So to start, Val, um, oh, I just lost my place. I'm sorry. Uh, can you speak to the methodology of the different data points you had and how, how you've um, gone about collecting those? Sure. So there's two different ways we are collecting and sharing the data with you. Actually, three different ways, including Becky's information as well. Becky mentioned some research from YouGov, like a third party. Um, that's one way. But for all the sentiment analysis, when it comes to 
asking users survey questions of how do you feel about travel? What are the biggest priorities about travel? We ask users directly. We ask TripAdvisor users that either log in or just come to our site, we ask them. So it's still first party data. Um, now for the other pieces, the market level analysis, that is based on when users are coming to our site and actually clicking something. So that's really important to know because we're not just looking at how people are dreaming of traveling, but we're digging into a little bit further down that booking funnel, right? Whether they're on a restaurants page or a hotels listings page, I'm specifically looking at not just the view, but when someone clicked because they're actually ready to book. Awesome. Thank you so much. Sorry, I was searching for the mute button there. Um, okay, so Becky, a few folks have asked if they can't do all of the safety measures, what? how should they think about their strategy for approaching them? Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think one of the things that we've been hearing about is that um, implementing all of these measures or precautions for travelers is expensive. Um, supplies are hard to get, um, and obviously it runs the board. You could have UV filters or disinfecting wipes. It's definitely... Um, you know, across the board. So what I would say is the thing that resonated the most with us at TripAdvisor from the feedback that we've heard is that travelers just want to know you're doing something and they want you to be really communicative about what you're doing. So even if you're only doing five of the things on the list that uh, maybe TripAdvisor put out there, make sure that you're advertising the heck out of those five things. Put it on TripAdvisor, put signs up at your property saying that everybody temperature is checked when they come to work. Just make sure that you are over communicating all of the efforts that you're doing, even if it's not, um, you know, it, yeah, putting in a new $20,000 HEPA filter. Um, they still want to know that you're taking their safety seriously. Great. Thanks so much, Becky. And um, maybe just staying with you for one more minute. Uh, Jenny wants to know if this Travel Safe initiative is part of the basic free TripAdvisor listing. Yeah, definitely. That's a good question. Um, we at TripAdvisor don't want to uh, hide safety information from travelers behind any sort of paywall or, or make you pay to share that information with travelers. So this is part of available to everybody, um, regardless of what your paid relationship might be with TripAdvisor um, with any of our other opportunities. Great, thank you so much. Um, Val, from your research and analysis, what would be the time when you would expect um, between between domestic and international to come back? Would it be more towards next year? I think the question is really like, when do we expect international to start becoming more of a factor? Sure, um, this is a really good question because I also can't wait. <laughs> so we, I mean, we are seeing touches of international dreamers happening. But to be honest, it's twofold. One is when international borders reopen. It's just some of it is some of the countries around the globe just don't allow other folks to be coming in. The borders are closed, so we physically cannot travel to those places. So one, those borders need to reopen. But two, I think we need to wait a little bit longer to get more comfortable in this domestic phase where people, more and more people have become more comfortable traveling locally, doing the road trips, or even um, taking a flight across the country or intra-regionally. And then I would assume folks are going to start feeling more comfortable committing to a longer flight across seas. To be honest, I think this will happen a little bit closer to when a vaccine is announced. Uh, not necessarily when a vaccine is out and uh, developed fully, but I think once it's announced and there's a plan in place, people will feel more comfortable just making those plans to travel overseas. Cool, thanks, Val. Um, Becky, one more for you, and I'm I'm gonna read it as it came in. Um, if someone has a bad review about cleanliness and then they add all the necessary precautions like sanitizer, will the COVID page be updated? 
Okay. Yeah. Um, that's a good one. So, uh, you know, again, things with the COVID-19 situation and recommended precautions and what travelers want to see are constantly changing. That's, you know, that's honestly just going to continue uh, probably throughout the end of this year, if not longer. So what I would say is if there is a review that isn't talking great about COVID-19 precautions, you handle it in two ways. One, um, the way that I always recommend that you handle uh, bad reviews, which is leverage that management response feature. Um, let travelers know that you specifically um, heard the concerns from the traveler who left the review and how you address those concerns. Um, but then too, the great thing about this COVID-19 section is that you can go ahead and um, update the measures that you're taking within the COVID-19 section. You can do that at any time. And you can use that uh, free form text box to address any issues that you uh, might have changed or um, things that you've done differently. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Becky. And I think I have one more for you, Becky, and then I think that's it. Um, so Becky Christians asked, are the COVID-19 search filter or travel safe initiative information for properties visible on the TripAdvisor mobile app? Um, so they are not visible right now. Um, that is part of our future plans, but right now it is visible on desktop only. All right. And I think uh, that's all the questions that we've received as of right now. So I guess with that, we will we will close it out. Um, just wanted to thank Ashley Jackson and the FRLA for having us today. Um, again, if you need any additional information, we encourage you to check out tripadvisor.com slash insights. Thanks again for taking time out of your busy days to speak with us and um, wishing you all the best. We'll talk to you soon and hope you stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.